Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to another jet engine related video within this small series about jet engines. Imagine soaring or powering at supersonic speeds, blazing through the skies with a raw power that leaves a trailer fire behind. This is the SR-71 Blackbird in action, an iconic example of an aircraft that had afterburners fitted to its jet engines. These afterburners are what allowed this aircraft and many others to reach extraordinary speeds, unlocking their full potential. But what exactly is an afterburner and how does it work to deliver such a significant boost in thrust? Buckle up and find out in a minute. <laughs> By just looking at the word after burner, we can already tell that something is being burned after something. So basically speaking, an afterburner is an additional combustion chamber added to a jet engine. It's mainly used in military aircraft that need an extra boost for its task like supersonic flight, rapid takeoffs and intense combat maneuvers. In an afterburner, fuel is injected directly into the hot exhaust gases after the engine's turbine, allowing the afterburner to create a second, more powerful combustion process. This in turn significantly increases thrust without requiring a bigger, heavier engine. We'll use the General Electric J79 turbojet engine, famously powering the F-104 Lockheed Starfighter. The science behind the afterburner. Let's break down the science of how afterburners work. Now, jet engines, including afterburners, rely on Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This law is the heart of jet propulsion, where thrust is generated by accelerating air backwards, pushing the aircraft forward. Now, in my previous videos, you saw me using the thrust formula, which in its simplest form describes thrust as being proportional to the mass of air flowing through the engine per unit of time, multiplied by the difference in speed of the air that's flowing into the engines and the air that is being expelled by the exhaust nozzle. In a conventional jet engine, air is first compressed, then mixed with fuel, ignited and expelled at high speeds through a nozzle to create thrust. But with an afterburner, fuel is injected into the already hot exhaust gases after they've passed through the turbine, creating an additional combustion process that reignites the exhaust gases. All right, a quick dive into the physics behind it for all of you who like the more technical insights. Remember the thermodynamic process, which I explained the basics of it in the first video about the turbojet engine? If not, I highly recommend you to watch it. Now, what the afterburner does, it raises the temperature of the airflow by burning additional fuel in the exhaust stream after the energy necessary to power the engine itself has already been extracted by the turbine. Similar to the combustion chamber, this process is ideally done at constant pressure, raising the enthalpy of the fluid as seen in this diagram. This drastically increases the kinetic energy of the airflow, resulting in an additional increase in thrust compared to an engine without an afterburner. How is an afterburner designed? For all of this to work, afterburners have to have additional fuel spray bars or combustion rings fitted behind a turbine to inject fuel into the exhaust. Furthermore, most afterburners feature structures called the flame holders, which help stabilize the combustion. In terms of temperature control, the inner casing of the afterburner needs to be able to withstand the temperatures created by the additional combustion, which can be in excess of a thousand degrees Celsius. Therefore, afterburner sections need special coatings or even cooling ribs and can usually not be operated for a prolonged time. Integrating an afterburner influences every aspect of an engine's design. For instance, turbojets, which are optimized for speed, pair well with afterburners, but they are relatively fuel inefficient even before adding an afterburner. Turbofans, on the other hand, balance efficiency and thrust by combining a core jet stream with cooler bypassed air. 
When afterburners are added to turbo fans, which really do exist, this bypass air helps the afterburner achieve better fuel efficiency and enhanced thrust output. This makes afterburning turbo fans, also called augmented turbo fans, ideal for modern fighter jets like the Eurofighter, for example. In some advanced engines, thrust can be further optimized by burning fuel in a specific section of the exhaust stream. For example, the Pratt & Whitney TF-30 featured separate zones for its bypass and core flows, allowing for a more controlled and efficient afterburning process. Other engines, like the Rolls-Royce Spey, mix both flows before afterburning to produce an intense thrust for supersonic performance. By the way, can you guess which, in my opinion, is the most famous afterburning engine and corresponding aircraft that has been used in civil commercial service? I'll bet most of you will get this one right, so pause the video and comment below. <laughs> Sorry for the quick interruption, just wanted to say if you want to become a pilot and you want to inform yourself on all the steps that you need to beg or if you need a supportive community if you are already on your way on becoming a pilot check out the link below and join my patreon group you will not regret it there's a huge group of people who are just willing to help we're gonna have regular zoom calls we're gonna have direct messaging we can chat with each other it's gonna be great check it out and see you on the other side see ya efficiency and limitations of afterburners Although afterburners provide a significant boost in thrust, their efficiency is a trade-off. I mean, this is no wonder if you imagine that fuel is literally poured into the exhaust. An F-16 fighter jet, for example, has a normal fuel consumption of roughly 3,000 liters per hour. Activate the afterburner and this figure triples to up to 9,000 liters per hour. Let that sink in. <laughs> Due to the high fuel consumption, afterburners are typically used in short bursts. One exceptional case, however, is the SR-71 Blackbird you already saw in the beginning of the video. Designed for high altitude reconnaissance, its Pratt & Whitney J-58 engines were engineered to run in afterburning mode for extended periods, allowing the Blackbird to reach speeds of Mach 3.2. <laughs> Innovations in thermal coatings and cooling techniques enabled the afterburners to sustain prolonged use, a rare achievement in jet engine design. While primarily a feature in military jets, a handful of civilian aircraft like the Concorde and the Tupolev Tu-144 also used afterburners. However, due to the fuel demands, these aircrafts only engaged afterburners during takeoff or when passing through high drag transonic speeds. Future innovations may allow us to achieve high thrust with less fuel, paving the way for more efficient and environmentally friendly solutions. Until then, the afterburner continues to push the boundaries of speed and power propelling humanity closer to the edge of what is possible. So fingers crossed for the ambitious boom project on getting their plane propelled into the next generation of air travel. On that final note, you may have seen these great visual effects of an afterburner in action. This is due to the formation of shock diamonds in the exhaust plum. These are created by shock waves forming from density and pressure differences between the exhaust gases and the outside atmosphere. Now, these shock diamonds are not just stunning to look at, they are a physical indication of the intense power produced by the afterburner. And this sadly brings us to the end of our video series on jet engines. I hope you really, really enjoyed it. And on that bombshell, here is your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go, add my website, check. Also check out the German Museum, the Deutsche Museum in Munich, absolutely worth it. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.